not a bad writer. You think so? Mm -hmm. Good style, nice imagination. I think he's a very talented man. Well, thank you very much. Oh, it's nothing really. <laughs> There's room B, room A. I wonder where room E is. How should I know? Are you going to the Waterbury Lecture? No, I'm not. Let's find out where she's going. Oh, good. I'm sorry. Uh, where's the Waterbury Lecture, do you know? Are you all in Waterbury? Yes, I am. How do you do? Follow me. Where are you taking me? Room E. Are you a student or a teacher? I'm a student. Oh, advanced or beginner? What do I look like? Well, you look very advanced to me. Oh, Mr. Waterbury, good evening. How do you do, Mr. Gilbride? You're right on time. We almost didn't get here. I was doing his laundry and we had to wait for it to dry. His uh, underwear is still wet. I brought a friend, Mr. Ronnie Hastings. Oh, <laughs> how do you do, Mr. Hastings? Hey, let me get you a chair. No, 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 never mind. I'll, uh, I'll sit in the bleachers. Going to be a writer too? I hope to be someday. Well, uh, this lecture should help you a great deal. He's a great writer, isn't he? Oh, yes. Of course, he gets most of his ideas from me. Excuse me. Yes? Uh, you're sitting in my seat. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Good evening, Miss Taylor. Hello, Mr. Scott. Uh, anybody sitting here? Yes, Clarence Henderson. But he's out sick tonight. Well, then why did you make me move? Oh, well, Clarence and I don't speak. Oh, well... Has I seen class? Has I promised you our guest speaker tonight will be none other than Owen Waterbury, author of the new bestseller, Last Year's Love. <laughs> Mr. Waterbury! Oh, louder, louder. That's enough. I understand that most of you hold all sorts of jobs during the day, and yet you've been studying the technique of writing in the evening. Now you're ready to take your pen in hand and go out and conquer the world. <laughs> you know, I'm hardly the person to tell you how to write because I don't follow any rules. Today, the writer is asked to keep one eye on the bestseller list, the other on us. That's divided loyalty, and that makes for dishonesty. I must confess, I've been guilty of this dishonesty, too. But now that I've made my position secure, I'm going to try to write a really good book. No more bestsellers, but something that I hope will be a piece of great writing. You know, good writing, fine writing, is here and here. The dictionary is filled with all the words you need, but unless the mind and the heart find those words for you, you better leave them in the dictionary. He's so brilliant. Because a writer, fundamentally, must believe in himself. That's half the battle. I'd uh, like to interrupt my little talk for a moment to say that I'm going to be in a position to help somebody here in this class. Beginning tomorrow, I'm going to need a secretary. I've already placed the request with the University Placement Bureau, and uh, man or woman, whoever qualifies, will get the job. That's very nice of you, Mr. Waterbury. Well, it's not a big job, but the surroundings will be wholesome. And you'll be able to serve your apprenticeship under someone who's already established. Well, so much for that. I remember when I wrote my first novel. It took a lot of work. I starved, lived in a little back room, all the while consoling myself that I was going to be another So you're really going to work for Owen Waterbury? Well, I, I was offered the job by his personnel manager. I've heard a lot of weird stories about Owen Waterbury. Oh, you hear weird stories about any famous person. Why, last night his talk was actually inspiring. Gee, do you realize he's been here five years? Well, isn't that a, a little too long for anyone with my ambition? Where does Mr. Waterbury do his work? Well, his personnel manager said in his apartment. Apartment? Well, you can't expect a writer to work in an office, Mr. Harris. 
I want to write, and I think he can show me how. Who knows? After a year with him, I, I might even be autographing copies of my own book in, in one of your bookstores. By taking a course in Owen Walker. And getting paid for it at the same time. I'm going to miss you, Steve. Oh, no, you won't. After a week, you won't even know I've gone. Not true, but good luck anyway. Well, I could make a big speech, but I think you know how I feel about everything. You've been wonderful to me. I understand. Steve. Yes? Call me sometime, will you? We'd like to know how you're getting on. I'll call you tonight, after I get the job. Well, you can back up, can't you? You got a revise. Never mind, Bill. Just save your energy for upstairs. Smart guy. Hand me the bag, Bill. Yes, sir. I'll take it upstairs for you, man. <laughs> Anything drives a cab these days. Apartment 3D. Thank you. I can see never, Bill. If you said one word that's out of line, just one word, I want you to block it right on the job. They might take my license away. Not for protecting a lady. Well, come from in and out, in and out. You know, I hit pretty hard, the harder the better. Is he a big guy? Six feet of bluff. I'll cut him down. I didn't get this nose for nothing. Uh, are you sure he can't fight? He's a writer. Writer? Writer? Now remember, if he just so much as opens his mouth. Uh, don't worry, I'll shut it up. I got a bigger mouth than he's got. I've come for my things. Yeah, and what's the objection? Evidently, he has none. Follow me, Bill. Now then, I want you to take all the things out of that drawer and put them into that bag. Yes, ma'am. No, 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 not the drawer, just the things. Oh, oh come in, come in, come right in. That's right. Uh, that's Mr. Waterbury's former secretary. She quit this morning. Uh, won't you sit down? This is my Nick. And how? Waterbury gave that to her as a Christmas bonus. My typewriter. Well, uh, that was sort of a New Year's bonus. My old tweet. Uh, she brought her own, uh, aujourd'hui. My pot. She, uh, she cooked once in a while. My bourbon. She, uh, drank a little. My cigarette box. She smoked, too. My lipstick. Uh, shall we adjourn to the library? Your frankfurters. Goodbye, Mr. Waterbury. Good thing you didn't open your mouth. Y thank you. Come along, Bill. Don't bother with your inferiors. And now, miss, what can I do for you? This, uh, this is your new secretary. Oh, yes, you're from the Kilbride School. Yes, I am. Say, look at that. She knocked over a bottle of ink all over the carpet, and it's going to be hard to get out, too. Oh, would you try cleaning it up, please, Mary? Not me. The landlady says I'm not to clean up any more messes. Just do my regular work and get out of here. Excuse me. Would you like some help? Oh, thank you very much. Say, you're going to work out fine. Here, Ronnie. I'm an expert at this sort of thing. He sure is. He cleans up about six of them a month. I'll need a cloth and some rug shampoo. This is the stuff you've been using lately. Kids, this is a woman's job. It was a woman who did it. It was an accident. You better not let the landlady see that. She'll add a hundred dollars for damages to your rent. That's more than last month. Uh, I got some on my dress. Oh, I'm, oh, look, why don't you work on the rug and I'll work on your dress? Why don't you two work on the rug and I'll work on her dress? I'll work on my dress. I'll work on the kitchen. You like hot dogs? Occasionally, yes. Fine, we'll have them for lunch. And for dinner, we'll have steak. Lunch? Dinner what? I haven't even been interviewed yet. What's your name? Stephanie Gaylord. What do your friends call you? Steve. Oh, that settles it. I think she should be hired. 
How are you in shorthand? 120 words a minute. Do you do laundry? From my own, generally. Well, you're going to have to learn to do silk shirts, 120 a minute. I'll do the cooking and eating. <laughs> do you live here, too? No, I live next door. But he hasn't been there since July. That's because I have no kitchen. Well, we see, we share our kitchen on a cooperative basis. He cooks and he eats. <laughs> you know, Owen and I went to school together. I was in kindergarten, and he was in the eighth grade. And I went to high school, and he was still in kindergarten. And then I studied piano and became a character in every Waterbury book. And what were you in last year's love? I was the chorus girl who studied piano and was very bitter about the world. Where'd you work before? Who, me? I was secretary to Charles Harris. He, he owns the Harris bookstores all over the country. And how is Mr. Waterbury's latest novel doing? Second only to the Bible. Oh, he won't like that. You married, Steve? No, I'm not. Please, Ronnie, I'm not interested in whether or not Miss Gaylord is married. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> My biscuits are burning. I've, uh, I've had marriage secretaries before, and, well, their husbands were a little troublesome. <laughs> they were murder. <laughs> uh, his working hours are very peculiar. Well, I think we've done a good job. I had such a different impression of what this job would be like. Oh, today was an unusual day. But after this, there'll be no more distractions. I'll go! We're going to work in an atmosphere of dignity and culture. Oh, it's your bookmaker. Mary, that man's here again. I heard you. How much do I owe this time? Eleven bucks. Don't you give me no more of your tips. That horse will come in next time out. Next time out, he'll be dragging a load of ice. Well, uh, what do we owe you? 278 for Owen and a buck for you. Excuse me. Here you are. Uh, I'll have to owe you mine until next week. You want to wager today? Well, uh, I haven't looked them over yet, but I'll give you a call. And no more 50 cent bets. The boss don't like him. It's a world of fun at Enchanted Parks in Federal Way. Get ready for the big grand opening of Wild Waves on Saturday, May 20th. Enchanted Parks is offering you this super summer prize package. Call this number right now. The 11th caller will receive four beach towels, four food tickets, and four free passes to Wild Waves and Enchanted Village, plus much more in a colorful tote bag. Keep watching KSC Washington for your chance to experience Enchanted Park. It's a world of fun. Now, save 25 to 39 percent on quality Goodyear radio. A special factory purchase means Goodyear retailers will sell thousands of Goodyear's best radios at savings from $69 to $265 on these tires. All season radios for passenger cars, radios for imports, light trucks and vans, and performance cars. All sizes are on sale from 25 to 39 percent off. Sale ends May 13th. Check your newspaper for the participating Goodyear retailer nearest you. 21. I see you watching me. <laughs> I'm not watching you. Liar. She was trouble. I hate my whole stupid life. Lost angels take what they can get. Horrible in Lost Angels, rated R. Starts tomorrow at selected theaters. Doctors recommend 2020 vision. And Western Optical recommends their 2020 special of the month. $20 off frames and $20 off lenses. That's a total of $40 off a complete pair of eyewear. At Western Optical, your satisfaction is unconditionally guaranteed. 2020 sale good this month only at family-owned Western Africa. Good evening, I'm Charles Johnson. No problems this morning for the space shuttle Atlantis as it blasted off from Cape Canaveral. We'll have the story tonight on the 10 o'clock news. Also, does Tacoma need another waterfront restaurant? Owners of two already there say no way. And Jerry Kemp reviews another new release. I'm Jerry Kemp. 
Tonight, I'll have a review of Scandal, the new movie about the Christine Keeler, John Cosimo scandal that rocked Britain in 1963. Dave Forster will have weather. Cal Glom said sports, and Wendy Mann and I will have news tonight at 10. We'll see you then. Okay, he's about after some serious stomach cramping and heavy market research, I'm happy to report I got the best on vacation day. Yeah. Us kids fly for a dollar with our parents on Continental Tuesday and Wednesday all summer. Can't fight the rest of them. And what else? You gotta move fast. You gotta buy the kids before May 26th. Okay? So you know what to do. Yeah. Yeah. Made them blood enemies. <laughs> now the streets will force them back together. Come on, my brother. He's not your brother now. Give them a cause. You live on your street? They need to fight cancer. And make them fight the madness that bred them. <laughs> True blood. Rated R. Starts Friday at a theater near you. The action and excitement begins Friday night at 5 when the Seattle Mariners take on the Baltimore Orioles in a two-night stand. Get in the game with AFC Washington. Um, where was I? You were telling me that everything here was dignified and cultural. Oh, yes. Now, Steve, about your other duties. have an interview with my daughter, Mary Hastings, about a secretarial job? Why, yes. I have a message for you. Oh, well, what's the message? Mr. Waterbury, I don't think I want this job. Well, why not? Well, when you spoke at class last evening, my, everything seemed so, so refreshing. And when I read your novels, they, they were filled with such quality and high purpose. And I'm afraid all that's spoiled now, so no harsh words, no hard feelings. Just, just get somebody else. Well, if that's the way you feel, Miss Gaylord. Are you walking out on Owen Waterbury? Don't beg the girl to work for me, Ronnie. Just call the agency and get another girl. Now, you know you don't mean that. We both like this one. Are you going to let me out of here, or do I have to call the police? They're here already. I came for the end. <laughs> Mrs. Reeves, I just mailed you a check this morning. Oh, you always do that, knowing full well that I only live downstairs. Any uh, damage this month? Oh, it's been a very, very uneventful month. Oh, the carpet again. <laughs> Mercy! This fish belongs here. And this duck up here, you throw the whole room out of contour. Mrs. Reeves, if you'll excuse me. I heard you uh, screaming just outside the door. New secretary? Well, yes, yes. You being hired or fired? Uh, Miss Gaylord has just been engaged. Oh, too bad, Mr. Walter, because something moved me part enough stairs would just fill your every requirement. Well, unfortunately, Mrs. Reeves, uh, the job has just been filled. Well, I want you to meet her anyway. Felicia! a lot of talent there. Oh, I thought you'd think so. I was a model back in Texas, but I came out here for a career. Daddy's financing me. A friend of yours? Oh, uh, no, my father. Uh, perhaps Felicia could play the heroine in your next novel when it's made to a movie. Uh, she could do that. What's a heroine like? It's a girl from the South. Why, well, I'm from the South. How perfectly coincidental. 
Uh, she's trying to hook a rich man. She's insincere and a moron. Well, what's worrying you? Well, I'm not so worried about being insincere, but as for being a moron... Well, now, don't worry about that. You could act like a moron, couldn't you, dear? I could try. Oh, I'm going to dramatic school. Maybe they can teach me to be a moron. If you studied hard enough, yes. It would take a lot of work. Look, Mrs. Reeves, I haven't even started my novel yet. And it doesn't look as if I'm going to if I'm continually interrupted. Well, we'll leave and let you work. Oh, Ronnie, I'm having a party for 50 guests tonight, and I'm expecting you to entertain for us at 9. Is it informal, or shall I bathe? If you don't care to entertain at my party, pay your rent. <laughs> well, I'm off to the show. You haven't got a chance. <laughs> You know, ever since her husband died and left her seven buildings, she's been a peeping Tom. Now, come on, Steve, let you and I prepare lunch. Look, I stayed only because I, I didn't want to cause a scene in front of your landlady, but I'm really leaving now. Water night. Water night. Take this down. Come on, take it down. Get well, where's your pad? Well, I'm going to have a pad. You can't spell a job like this without a pad. Oh, 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 I couldn't wait for you to call me, so I'm calling you. How was the job? Well, I, I have to make an adjustment, you know. It's, it's such an unusual kind of a job. I can imagine. He, he started his novel today. Oh? Interesting story? Well, he didn't get very far into it, but, but I'm sure it's going to be wonderful. He, he seems so excited about it. Look, Steve, let's have dinner one night this week. Well, I'll call you the first night I have free. Yesterday. Note on my new novel. 
Yeah. Uh. Go. Hello. 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 Wow. Now, uh, where did he go? Notes on my new novel. Oh, yeah. Make that notes on my new novel by Owen Waterbury. That's good. Oh, that's real good. Don't you think that's good? Oh, I like that. Chapter one, general introduction of character. Chapter two. Well, I'll do chapter two tomorrow. Chapter a day, that's swell. You sure you're not tired? Miss Gaylord, you stay here and answer the telephone. I, uh, I'm going to the beach for some salt air. Well, be sure you don't bring any home with you. Right, boy. Let's drive someplace nice, like Santa Barbara. Well, honey, anything you say. Don't pay any attention to him. He's just trying to make you jealous. Jealous? Well, what makes you think I'm, I'm even interested in him? You know, for a secretary who's just been given the day off, you're awfully annoyed. Annoyed? Of course I'm annoyed. I just don't want to sit here doing nothing. I came here to work. I came here to do nothing, and now I'm working. Look, if you get paid for idleness, grab it, you fool! There goes another one. Waterbury intend to write a book? That's a very interesting question. Waterbury's a genius. What do you think he's doing right now? Incubating. Exactly. And whenever he goes through a mood like this, a great book comes out of it. I'll bet he does a lot of writing tonight. Why, honey, you're jealous. Look, I don't even know Mr. Waterbury. At this point, I'm not even sure I want to. Of course not, honey. Can you tell me what I'm doing wrong? Everything. Here, let me have it. How can you get so many wrinkles in it? We've tried 16 laundries, but he still likes my work best. He's a good shirt. We're good shirts. You know, I just thought of something. What? I must be going out of my mind. What? Well, I went to night school for a whole year to learn to be a writer. And here I am doing a guy's laundry. Oh! It's not done yet. Hello? Miss Gaylord, this is Old Waterbury. I want you to be here tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. I've finally gotten the idea. Thank you. You know, Owen, I like that idea. Yeah? I don't think there's a horse in there that can beat him. Never. <laughs> Morning. Oh, leave your coat on. Eve, the taxi will be here in just a minute. Little fair for her? Well, she can use mine. Where are we going? To the races. The races? Haven't you ever oh, been? I've never in my life. Well, always lucky the first time. Come on. But what about that idea you said last night? Oh, that? back and wait till after the third race. Look, I've got a fourth in here. Look, Mr. Waterbury, I don't think I ought to go along. Hey, are you complaining about being paid to go to the races? Come on! Well, Pizza, we are proud of the tremendous amount of toppings we put on our pizza, and they still keep our prices low. And that responsibility rests solely on Dennis. He's our accountant. In fact, it was his idea 
to sell two medium super pepperoni pizzas for $10.99. So he wouldn't even think of charging more than $10.99. Would you, Dennis? For a limited time, get two medium super pepperoni Godfather's pizzas for $10.99. So hurry before Dennis changes his mind. I like quiet little towns like Crescent Beach. <laughs> Catching live ones out of the sea. Fireside Shack, Mountain Air, Hot Dogs, and Cold Coors Beer. It takes a part of this country as cold and clean as the Rockies. To brew a beer as pure and natural as Coors. Brew refreshed, just like you like it. Have an ice cold Coors with a friend of yours. A Rocky Mountain legend, an American original. Open wide, wider. When you need glasses fast. Can you hold still? Huh? For about an hour. Huh? You need Pearl Eye Test for glasses in one hour. And now buy one pair, get one free. Or buy Durasoft Color Contacts and get a clear pair free. Coupon and details in magazines and newspapers. I'm back. We're finished. Oh, Rin. Oh. Buy one pair, get one free at Pearl Eye Test. This year, a giant 72-hour clearance sale on over 200 used cars and trucks at Sound Ford. Incredible prices with many under $1,000. Look at 71 Datsun 240Z, only $699. And get this, choose from a special group under $99 a month, just $299 down. Like an 82 Toyota to sell, only $49 a month. Or a 77 Ford 4x4 pickup, just $59 a month. Check the new special for complete listings. Used cars under $99 a month. Till Monday only at Sound Ford in Renton. With service owners for life. Tomorrow night at 8, Rodney Dangerfield goes back to school. KSC Washington's 8 o'clock movie will return in a moment. Contact lenses always start out clear, but no matter how much you clean them, residue can build up and irritate your eyes. Now Johnson & Johnson introduces AccuView, the first disposable contact lens. You never clean them. You leave AccuView in for about a week, and before long-term buildup becomes a problem, you throw them away. Discover AccuView, the vision of the future. Only from your eye care professional and Johnson & Johnson. Express mail from your post office along with postal services throughout the world introduces a deal of global proportions. Now we'll deliver your letters and documents to over 90 countries for just $10.75. With a special trial offer until July 1st of just $8.75. That's up to 50% less than what our competitors charge. So now your dollar can go further overseas than ever before. Express Mail International Service. Bad habits are so hard to break. Bad habits are so hard to break. Even though I love my soft scrub cleanser, I've always hung on to this powder for those hardcore stains. But now, I've got new Soft Scrub with Clorox Sleep. It's as tough as any powder on stains, but it's as gentle as Soft Scrub on everything else. So which one will I hang on to? Bye-bye powder. Soft Scrub and Soft Scrub with Clorox Bleach wipe out the need for powder. There are two kinds of haircuts in this world. Other cuts and super cuts. If you can't tell the difference, well, good luck. The 59 cent value menu from Taco Bell. Where the best food meets an even better price. Well, so 
so far, this job has cost me $83. Now, don't worry. I'll see if you get that back. Why should you? I gambled and I lost. Well, losing is good for the soul. We have the three best souls in town. Good morning. Good morning. We'll leave your coat on, Steve. The plane leaves in 35 minutes. The plane? Where are you going? Las Vegas and get back your $83. Las Vegas? I can't go to Las Vegas with you. Well, are you objecting to being paid while working? Paid? I don't think I can afford to work for you much longer, Mr. Waterbury. Oh, Steve, it only takes an hour and a half to fly. You catch the evening plane back, you're home in time for dinner. Quit oh. tons of money. No, I won't. No, I can't. No, no, no. another love story. Will you work for me? If you work, I'll work for you. Thank you. I'm four again. I just switched to seven. Why? The cat 
Daphne's going to be here in just one minute. What? Oh, don't worry. We're going to work, but let's do it at the beach house. Huh? He's superstitious, honey. He starts all his novels at the beach house. <laughs> well, why the beach house? Did you like last year's love? Very much. Well, most of last year's love was done down there. Well, uh, shall I take the typewriter? It'll be a nice idea. Well, honey, will you stop teasing the girl? I'll be dictating today. Come on, please. <laughs> I'll dictate this in outline form, and then I'll polish it up later. Yes, Mr. Waterbury. This is the story of a successful novelist who began to die, morally and spiritually, until a girl came into his life. And then the whole world soon changed. He'd seen her one night while delivering a lecture to a short story class. There were so many faces looming up in front of him, but he saw only one, hers. Wistful, delicate, exquisitely beautiful. Without her knowledge, he arranged to make her his secretary because in that fleeting moment, in that single instant, he knew he was desperately in love with her. One day, he asked her to go to his beach house and work there because he, he wanted very much to tell her the way he felt, but he lacked the courage. Mr. Waterbury, I... Miss Gaylord, when I'm working, I don't like to be disturbed. Sorry. Uh, where was I? He wanted very much to tell her how he felt, but he lacked the courage. Oh. Oh, yes. Now here she was, seated before him, tender and fragile as a thorn. He had looked around a corner to corner, and there she was. Uh, What's the matter? Oh, I broke my pencil. Uh, here you are. Let's continue. He, uh... He was tempted to take her up in his arms and sweep her to the summit, but he didn't dare. He knew very little about her, yet there was nothing else he needed to know. As he strode up and down the room dictating, he, uh, he looked toward a polka dot necktie. What's the matter with you? Nothing. Oh. Uh, where was I? Polka dot necktie. Oh, polka dot necktie. Uh, he, uh... He was impressed by the loveliness of her hair, her soft blue eyes, her delicate mouth. A breathing, living thing that made him exalted and inspired. He wanted to take her in his arms and smother her with kisses and drown himself in the beauty of her soul, but he was a coward. How do you like it? It, it has possibilities. Suddenly he threw caution to the wind. Leaned over and kissed her. She melted in his arms and offered no resistance. Wordlessly, they held one another in silent embrace. Oh, you've got the wrong girl, Mr. Waterbury. I'm really leaving you this time. And don't you ever try and get in touch with me again. I don't even want my salary check. You can save it for the next victim. And if I ever see one of your books again... Oh, burn it! KSC Washington's 8 o'clock movie will return after this.
tore them apart. Nothing's been the same since you left. Made them blood enemies. <laughs> now the streets will force them back together. Come on, my brother. He's not your brother now. Give them a cause. You live on the street? Make them fight the madness that bred them. True Blood, rated R. Starts Friday at a theater near you. And softball bats and gloves are 25% off. My mama showed me a place to shop around. Hello. Well, hello, son. I just thought I'd call you and let you know I made dinner for the three of us. And ask Steve if she likes popovers. Steve's just quick. Yeah. I'm dictating a harmless little scene. Suddenly she takes offense, slams me on the couch with a hammerlock, and walks out. Is she insane? Well, I'll call the agency and get him to send over another girl. I better get one who likes broiled chicken, because that's what we have for dinner. Don't call anybody. I'm not going to go to work for a long time. Come on, will you get out of here so I can wash these keys? I'm composing. Composing? I haven't heard a good song out of you yet. That's it. Give me that again. Thank you very much. What are you calling that thing? I got a cold in my nose. Come on, sing it. Oh, Mr. Donnie, I... Oh, don't be silly. I just want to hear the quality. Snip, snip. Here's a handkerchief. Ka-choo, ka-choo. Don't hide it to you. Let yourself go and blow. For that, you won't get a piece of pie. What's in that garbage can? Pie? 30 misses out of 31 tries. <laughs> 31 misses. Well, at least the roast chicken's safe. What's that? Roast chicken? How can you pull a roast chicken? No, I had to roast it in the pressure cooker. It melted a little. Oh, he'll have his dinner out tonight. Well, so am I. You don't think I'm going to eat this horrible mess, do you? Hi, Audie. Hi. He has a nice roast chicken for you, Mr. Waterbury. Give him a glass for huh? <laughs> Mr. Waterbury, I think it's my duty as your servant to tell you what just happened in the kitchen. Oh, now, Mary, why don't you go home? Mr. Lonnie set fire to the kitchen. I don't care if he set fire to the whole apartment. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Tattletail? A lot of good it did you. I'm going to tell the landlady on you, and you say... <laughs> Well, what happened down at the beach house? Will you stop asking me silly questions? I told you on the phone. She quit. That's all. Well, she had some nerve. Well, I don't need her. There's a lot of her secretary. Uh, of course there are. Just as capable, as fidget, and just as cute. Sure. You never did find out how good she could type. Well, I'll call the agency and get another secretary. No. I got a better idea. What's going to do? I'm going to pass. 
Where you go? To New York. Change of environment. I work better there. Gonna get rid of the apartment? Yep. Well, what's gonna happen to me? What should happen to you? That's a very unfair question. Boy, I'm not gonna let a little thing like a secretary throw me off balance. Never in a million years. I got a life to live, too. Wonderful, beautiful, exciting life. I got a book inside me, a great book, full of intensity and scope. Oh, you know something, Ronnie? I'm glad this happened. I'm down to earth now. What happened? Well, you can still use it. Elsie called. She's uh, sorry she quit in the house, and she apologized for the cab driver. See? That's what Steve will be doing tomorrow. Calling and apologizing, but I won't be here. Hey, what am I running away for anyway? I'm not afraid of her. That's what I like to hear. That's the real old water berry. Listen, call Elsie. We'll take her out to dinner. We'll take them all out to dinner. A different one each night. I'll go and change my apron and be right back. Uh, Brian, Detective Agency? Uh, this is Owen Waterbury. Yeah. Look, I want you to shadow a girl for me. Stephanie Gaylord. Uh, now, let's all try to have a good time tonight, okay? I'm willing. Are you running? I'm willing. Good evening, Mr. Waterbury. Hello, Francois. Here, why here? I like it here. You've always hated the Ridgely Room. He's joking. I'm not joking. You've always hated it, hasn't he, Elsie? I thought so. I've always hated it. Mr. Waterbury, there's a gentleman here to see you. Gentleman? Oh, oh, yes. Uh, Ronnie, will you take Elsie to a table, and I'll join you in just a minute, huh? All right, but don't leave us. Don't stick Elsie with the chest again. Antonio, table three. Table three. Uh, where is it? Alcove two. Oh. Good evening. Is that the gentleman? Yes, sir. Hello. Did you send me that message? Yes. Brian Detective Agent. Oh. Devin is the name. Well, how'd you find her so fast? That's my job. There she is, right over there. With a man. Who's the man? I don't know. Do you want me to find out? Of course I do. All right, I'll start shadowing both him and her. I want you to find out everything you can about her. I think she's in love with you. She your wife? No, my secretary. I get you. Look, I want nobody to know about this. Don't worry. The way I operate, even you won't know about it. Can you check a fast for me? It'll be expensive. Well, why? The unknown quantity. You just finished checking on a girl. Took us a year to get her past caught up with her present. Do a good job. I will. Take care of my check. Yes? Yes, give me a pack, please. Talk, did you? 
Ronnie, will you stop looking at everything as one big, long laugh? Well, I've got a laugh for you, lover boy. What? They're going to be married. They're what? They're going to be married. Where are you going? I'm going to talk to her. Your order, please. A boiled chicken. Yours? Well, I'll have a glass full, too. Hello. Good evening. Harris and Mr. Waterbury. Well, congratulations. I just heard the good news. What good news? Oh, about your marrying Stephanie. Uh, may I dance with the bride? That's entirely up to her. May I? Thank you. Not at all. No, so she decided to get married to the wrong guy. Are we going to dance, or are you going to dictate a novel? Oh, now, why should a nice, intelligent girl like you marry a man she doesn't even love? For your information, I'm not marrying anyone. Oh, well, now I respect you. You respect all girls who decide not to get married. <laughs> uh, going back to work for me? Is this a quiz, or are we going to dance? Well, it could be both. Say, how would you like your old job back? Better turn? Not interested. I'll throw in a bonus. Marry. Mr. Waterbury, you talk about marriage as though it was something cheap and vulgar. Who else but Owen Waterbury would invite you out for the evening and dance with another girl? I would. Say, why don't you pay him back and dance with Mr. Harris? I wouldn't think of dancing with my boss. This is me you're talking to, remember? Well, I mean, not till I'd work for him. For a few days. What's a nice sentiment? Steve, you're in my arms flat. I'm holding you in flat. We're dancing. You may be dancing, but I'm holding you. Oh, like the time to go out, but you also come in. Oh, and be you're the most maddening man I've ever met. Listen to me, Steve, I love you. Everything I dictated at the beach house, I meant, but it was too much of a coward to take it out. I love you. You marry me. Take a chance. This is me, the author of beautiful words, and I'm just out. All I can say is, I love you, Mary. Your chicken, madame. And your chicken, the glass. I think I'll be running along. Mr. Harris, would you mind taking me with you? Not at all. Well, who's going to take me? You watch the floor, Joe. Washington's 8 o'clock movie will return after this. Folks who use starter control crafts have a few things to say about their cleaning. Wonderful. Great. Marvelous. That's it. You should care. Beautiful. For me. 
Because dental cleanings are easier with Target Control Crest. Oh, yeah. Paradise. What I love to see. So use the toothpaste more dentists recommend. Wonderful. Target Control Crest, the dentist's choice. It's hard on Target and easy on you. All right. Ever have one of those days when you're not sure where to go for lunch or what to eat and you haven't got a lot of time or much money to spend? Do what I do. Go for Shakey's All-You-Can-Eat Luncheon Buffet for just $4.79. Mm -hmm. It looks like today is going to be one of those days. Get a 32-ounce Pepsi Please bottle filled with your favorite soft drink for only $1.49. Then retail for just $0.49 cents all year long. Now is the perfect time of year to have or attend an almond roast. We've put everything you'll need right here in this handy almond roast kit. That's awesome. This kit is so complete, the almonds are already roasted. Yay! The pork are not in yeah. Sweet Diamond Almonds. Look for our buy two, get one free offer in your Sunday paper. Don't you wish you had some right now? We, we wish you had some right now. A can a week, that's all we ask. Listen to me. A new movie about friendship. Oh, you guys are terrific. About growing up. How will you know it's love? Do you trust your parents? About wanting to be heard. Why are you so standoffish? I'm like this with everyone talking. Listen to me. It's a film about real life. Look, nobody said we had to like or respect each other. I wanted to be just like you. Listen to me. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday, May 5th at a theater near you. Good evening, I'm Charles Johnson. If you have a couple of unpaid traffic or parking tickets from the city of Seattle stuffed away in a drawer, the city may be looking for you. They have $20 million worth they want to collect on. We'll have the story tonight on the 10 o'clock news. Also, is she the gorilla his dreams? There may be a blessed event in the future. We'll have that story and more on daycare. I'm Vicki Gordon Mosby in Seattle. If you're a working parent, you're probably all too familiar with the anxiety of waking up with a sick child when you have to go to work. Join us tonight on the 10 o'clock news when we look at a very special center that may help you with your problem. Dave Torsha will have weather, Cal Grom said sports, and Wendy Mann and I will have news tonight at 10. We'll see you then. Rodney Dangerfield off to college. Drink it up, baby! In his biggest comedy smash. Ooh, I'd like to save your shoes. <laughs> got economics tomorrow at 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock? No good. I got a massage at 11 o'clock. Come to make it 2 o'clock. And good old college life will never be the same. Hey, boys, here's a couple of pens in case you learn how to write, okay? Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> so that's what I call marine biology. Is going back to school Friday at 8 on KSD Washington. Adventure is his middle name. You've been recruited by an organization that doesn't exist. And with the proper training. You are here to conquer your highest fear of height. He'll be our last hope for freedom. When will he be ready? Ahead of time, I think. America, meet your latest and greatest hero. These guys tried to kill me. You want more? Joel Gray and Fred Ward as Remo Williams. The adventure begins Saturday at 8 on KSC Washington. You know, Mr. Atwater, your daughter means everything to me. Sam, I think you're a very fine young man. Would you like a beer, Sam? Thanks. Ed Maroney is a man with a proposition. He sure could use an ice cold beer from 7 Eleven. I guess what I'm trying to say is that. <laughs> it's about the coldest beer anywhere, as long as the best prices in town. I guess what I'm trying to say is. That you would like my daughter's hand in marriage? Yes, sir. Well, the answer is no. Would you like uh, another beer, Sam? Ice cold beer at 7 Eleven. The sign of the times. Seattle, for the next 72 hours, Sound 40 is making an incredible offer on over 500 Ford. We'll cut your monthly payment in half for one full year. Escort, $59.71, $74 a month for one full year. $74, only $2.99 down. Ranger, $69.81, $89 a month. Taurus, $124 a month. Even Aerostar, $138 a month. Or get this, 2.9% financing, $2.9. Ford's lowest ever. Hurry, half payments ends Monday at Sound Ford and Renton with service loaners for life. Seattle's radio station for continuous classic rock and roll, 102.5 KZOK. And in addition to the Arthur supplies, please order one Remington electric typewriter for the outer office. Mr. Howard's office. Yes, Just a moment, please. Hello? Yes. 
What? When? Thank you, Mr. Bart. What's the matter? Is anything wrong? Owen Waterbury just married Steve. He didn't. Oh, yes, he did. I never thought she'd marry him. I never thought he'd get married. Well, here we are, honey. Welcome to Honeymoon Mass. Congratulations! Hi, you're right. <laughs> May I be the first to kiss the bride? <laughs> or am I the first? I'm not a very wide-awake bride. Honey, let's get some sleep and then we'll go to the beach house, huh? How long have you been driving? 24 hours. Las Vegas and back. Oh. Hey, who's back to this? Oh, well, those are the police sisters. As soon oh. as I told her the news, she decided to move out. It's a good idea. Darling, this is quite a threshold. Three stories up. Well, would you use the threshold upstairs? Oh, good idea. Hi, Felicia. Congratulations. You did very well. You certainly did. <laughs> I'll get you moved in as soon as I get her moved out. Okay. Uh, why don't you try the building next door here? <laughs> Driver, old lady's home. <laughs> trying to be helpful, but well, this is our honeymoon. Well, we'd like to be alone. Oh, sure. <laughs> sure. Say, Steve, be nice to him, will you? He's my only means of support. Darling, are you glad you married me? Oh, what a question to ask you now. Well, it was on the spur of the moment, and, and you do change your mind, so... Darling, I'll never change my mind about you. You're the first nice thing in my life. Could you tell me where is apartment 3E? Who are you looking for? Isn't that the business of the people in apartment 3E? It's the next apartment down the hall, sir. I beg your pardon. Yes, and what can I do for you? I have a message for Mr. Waterbury. Well, I'm afraid Mr. Waterbury can't be disturbed just now. He's, uh... He's a little busy. My name is Devon. Will you tell him the woman he's interested in got married? Hey, Owen! You got a minute? Ronnie, what is it now? There's a fellow was outside, said his name was Debney. He had a message for you. I don't know any Debney. He said the party you were interested in got married. Well, congratulations. So did I. Darling, whom were you interested in who got married? There's only one married girl I'm interested in. You tell Mr. Waterbury I won't see him right away, and I mean immediately. Owen, Arabo Hannah's here. We call you that affectionately here. <laughs> now what is it? Oh, excuse me. I didn't know your uh, secretary was working late. They're married. Married. Well, is this right? You might as well be in on this. Just what can I do for you, Mrs. Reed? I'm shouting for all the rent. But I paid you the rent on the first, Mrs. Reed. I had to make a new rule, Mr. Waterbury. I don't take bad checks. When did you make that rule? Since you moved in. 
Darling, do you happen to have $485 in the bank? I think so. Well, uh, could you write me out a check till I get this thing straightened out? I can't understand how my account got so low. That 6000 for the crap game? Oh, yes. Yeah. And the two bucks for the marriage license? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> thank you, dear. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Waterbury. <laughs> I never thought I'd ever call anybody Mrs. Waterbury. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll just walk you down the hall. Oh, thank you, Mommy. Is this any good? She's loaded. <laughs> well, I suppose an explanation is in order. You don't owe me an explanation. Oh, but darling, I want to explain. Oh, excuse me. Hello, Lauren. Oh, hello, Dick. Congratulations. We just heard. Well, thank you, Bertie. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Oh, darling. Uh, well, won't you come in and sit down? Oh, yes, thank thanks. You. Uh, oh, darling, I, I want you to meet Mr. Fulton, my publisher, and Bertie. This is my wife. How do you do? Mm -hmm. So nice knowing you. Oh, and you're not thinking of a prolonged honeymoon, are you? Oh, no, we're just going down to the beach house. And, well, I thought I'd dictate my honeymoon. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> you know, there's a deadline on that novel. It's got to be made. You know why. Well, I'll have it ready, Dick. I'll count on it. <laughs> Would you like a drink? No, no, thanks. We're double parked downstairs. Come here. Uh, how's Ronnie? Oh, still eating. Same old Ronnie. <laughs> Bertie told me about Ronnie. She says that when he dies, he'll ask the crematorium to base him slowly on both sides. <laughs> you know, Ronnie? Oh, of course. I was once Mr. Waterbury's secretary. Uh, well, thanks an awful lot for coming, Dick. Happy honeymoon. Thank you. Darling. Why did Mr. Fulton look at you so accusingly? Well, I owe him $20,000. I do it as advance royalty against my next novel. And that mink coat Mrs. Fulton had on? Is that one you gave her? Oh, bloody meant nothing to me. I'd written a bestseller and I was throwing money around like water. Well, and... You can always take it back and give it to Mr. Fulton as part payment. Oh, darling, I'll get you a hundred mink coats. <laughs> darling, I don't think I can afford a hundred mink coats. Throw up in your record and throw up. Honey, did you marry me for my money? No, but I'm beginning to think you married me for mine. <laughs> Look, darling, let's get out of here. We're never going to be alone here. Honey, I know a perfect little lost cabin away from publishers and landladies and secretaries. Well, except you. And I'm going to work. I promise. I promise you. How long did you work on this book, darling? Four months. I'm uh, rather proud of this one, Dick. Where's Mrs. Waterbury? Oh, she's down at the village getting groceries. She wants to prepare you one of her special dinners. Well, uh, I'm afraid I can't stay for dinner. I have to catch that next train back. Dick, let's drop the suspense. How'd you like the book? I'm going to let you have it right between the eyes, Ellen. You don't like it? I hate it. Just about the worst piece of drivel I ever read. If I were to publish this, Owen, it would ruin me. Fortunately, I found another book to use in its place. What's the matter with me, Dick? Am I through? Of course not. Every soft like novelist has a bad book in him. But how am I going to pay you back your money? Oh, don't worry about that. Sorry, Owen. Darling, I got some of that wonderful venison. Why, hello, Mr. Fulton. It's so nice seeing you again. What, really? Do you like venison? Well, I'm afraid I can't say. Well, why not? I've got some very important business in town. Well, I'm very sorry. I, I was going to fix you one of my special dishes. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, some other time. Goodbye, Mrs. Waterbury. Goodbye, Mr. Fulton. Goodbye, Owen. Goodbye, Dick. He doesn't like you. No. Do you think he's right? He's always been right. Until he married Bertie. What's that got to do with it? Maybe he's changed. Ever think of that? 
Maybe he sees you through different eyes. Oh, you talk like a fool. Oh, and let's face it. Your book is now being published by a man who sees his wife in your arms on every page. Who thinks that girl in there is Bertie and you? You're a child. Bertie meant nothing to me. He doesn't realize that. And he's still a human being, even if he is a publisher. And he's a man. Let's get away from here tonight. Tonight? Oh, and you blame me, don't you? Oh, not really, Steve. It's, it's just that it's so distracting to have a man's wife as his secretary, too. I've got to try another book fast. And... Yeah, I'm going to have to get myself another secretary. So I'm fired, is that it? Oh, Steve, it'll be better for both of us if I work by myself. It'll give you a chance to work on your own book. I'll make dinner. Owen, I finished my book. Oh, you did? Well, I'd like to read it. It's been on your dressing room table for two weeks. Oh. Well, I'll... Uh, uh, well, I'll read it on the train. Don't bother. Oh, yes, sir. No, I'm not. You call and get tickets for the train and send Ronnie a wire to get you a new secretary. a day from sun up to sun down for people who love a lot of coffee now there's perfect balance from hills brothers kathy lee four cups now it's five and in the big mug too perfect balance tastes just as good as Folgers regular ground but with half the caffeine al berry ten cups Booth county new perfect balance with half the caffeine enjoy all you want a super good sense home keeps winter cold out. Energy bills down, and it's certified energy efficient by your electric utility. Super good sense. And it's this dark. Oh, hello, Mrs. Waterbury. Hello, Elsie. Mr. Harris told me you found us at the station. Did you have a nice honey morning? Very nice, thank you. It must be lovely up at the cabin this time of the year. Yes, it is. A Waterbury original? His last. Steve. Hello, Charles. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. Oh, you're looking fine, fine. Well, four months of the outdoor life. None the worse for it. Charles, I want you to do me a favor. This is Owen's latest book. Fulton doesn't like it. I want you to read it and let me know what you think about it. I'll try to be as objective as possible. You will be, I know. And I have another manuscript for you. Mine. You finished it? Yes, it, it was a long uphill pull. 
I've changed the title so many times that I finally decided to call it Dawn Journey. What does Owen think of it? Owen hasn't read it yet. Oh? He hasn't had time. He's been busy writing. He couldn't concentrate on it. I'll be glad to read both of them. Thank you, sir. Goodbye, Steve. Goodbye, Charles. Third floor, but I can't find the Waterbury apartment. Well, here's Mrs. Waterbury. Well, how do you do? The employment service sent me over. What for? Oh, Mr. Waterbury wants to be secretary. Oh, is that so? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, follow me. Oh, thank you. Uh, I know it's going to be so exciting working for Mr. Waterbury. Oh, Love it. I know I will. <laughs> now, this is just a rush call. I hardly had time to dress. Oh, thank you so much. You know, I make my own clothes. Oh, really? Yes. Come in. Come right in, Miss Jack. What did you say your name was? Hilda Sneebacker. Sneebacker. Owen, oh, darling, this is your new secretary. How do you do? Oh, this is my husband, Owen Waterbury, and this is Ronnie, our next-door neighbor. How do you do? Uh, can I get you something to drink? Oh, uh, have you any beer? Well, I could say we have. <laughs> And we have pretzels, too. <laughs> you know, I could just drink a barrel of beer. <laughs> what did you ask for on the phone? I thought they knew our account. Dope. <laughs> oh, don't bother. <laughs> Why don't you bring your beer over here where we can be more comfortable? Oh, uh, do you do laundry, Miss Schneebacher? Do shirts and socks. I don't like to be seen. Oh. Well, sit down, please. Uh, how are you on um, handicapping the horses, Miss Schneebacher? Oh, yesterday I picked two winners. Played them both right on the schnozola. Oh, and I think she's enchanting. Uh, 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 what size coat do you wear? Can't you wear a coat on the job? Oh, Mr. Waterbury likes to give all his employees new coats for Christmas. Oh, I wish I'd known that. I could have saved the skunk wife. <laughs> I wonder who she means. I'm going to love this job. You're all so nuts. <laughs> uh, do you object working late hours, Miss Schneebacher? Not at all. A room with a girlfriend. I haven't seen her since New Year's. <laughs> Miss Schneebacher, I'm afraid this job is going to be a little too much for you. But why are well, we you see, just... several parts of my new novel are mostly in French, and well, I'm sure you don't speak French, do you, Miss Schneebacher? That he did for six years. Once I had a French boyfriend, we had no trouble. <laughs> uh, yes, but how's your shorthand? Shorthand? I don't take shorthand. You don't take shorthand? Well, no, the agency said this is strictly a typing job. Oh, <laughs> no, this is mostly a shorthand job. But I can learn it. No, no I know I'm that afraid it's... not. Well, guess that lets me out. Uh, leave the glass, please. Oh. Thanks for the beer. Uh, that must be the next one. The next one? I told the agency to keep sending them until we said when. How do you do? Is this apartment 3E? Yes, it is. Does a Mr. Owen Waterbury live here? Yes, he does. Uh, uh, I'm Owen Waterbury. Oh, Mr. Waterbury, the agency sent me. Dawn O'Malley. That's right. Uh, won't you come in, Miss O'Malley? Thank you. Uh, won't you sit down, Miss O'Malley? Thank you. Oh, this is my wife. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, you take your shorthand, of course. Yes, 120 words a minute. Oh. Uh, do you speak French, Miss O'Malley? 
Ma mère, elle est française. Et mon père aussi. Vous avez raison, elle n'est pas pour le faire. Dites-moi, mademoiselle, vous m'allez. Are you married by any chance? Yes, I am. But the divorce can be final next week. I see. When, uh, when would you like me to begin? You have begun. Oh, thank you. Uh, Steve, shall we prepare lunch and leave them alone? I think they'd like to get to work. All right. Uh, tell me, uh, did you ever work for a writer before? Yes, once about three years ago. But I'd, I'd rather not talk about it. Oh, well, why not? Well, he asked me to work late one evening and began getting a little fresh. So I called the police. All I want to do is work. I guess the publicity ruined his career. But he deserved it. Don't you agree? Yes, I do. How about lunch, Miss O'Malley? Oh, I've already eaten, thank you. And you, darling? Uh, no, thanks. I'll skip lunch today. You just love living in this village, Mr. Scott. And you just love the water balloons. They're so bohemian. Cool. I'll go. Oh, hello. Hello, Mrs. Robert. I want you to meet your new neighbor, Sylvan Scott. He's moving out of the back of the park upstairs. The police are using Yes, I know, Mr. Scott. Hello, oh, Stephanie. How nice. Come in, come now. I want you to meet the important member of the family. This is the great Owen Waterbury. Oh. How do you do, yes, Mr. Waterbury? How do you do? This is it's the... a horrible Ronnie Hastings. Hello. New secretary. Yes. He was just hired, and I was just fired. Mr. Scott's a writer, too. Bob Dylan, you'll be just crawling with them. <laughs> yes, Mr. Scott and I went to night school together. We sat next to each other. Mr. Scott used to be a ball player. Just look at those shoulders. And then I'll pad it either. Well, what do you know? Silver writes that wonderful radio program called John's Mother's Lover. John's Mother's Sweetheart. Oh, yes, Sammy. Confidently. Is John's mother going to marry us, we know? No, John's father objects. John has no father. Oh, poor John. Silver, you'd better rush upstairs and start work on that radio program. You mustn't neglect John. Well, I'm in a little trouble. You see, my secretary just got married. Oh, what on earth are you going to do? I don't know. I could help you, Silver. You, Stephanie? Yes, you see, I was Mr. Waterbury's secretary before he married me. That's right, you were. The marriage was a bonus. Mm -hmm. Oh, when could we begin? Why don't you just say, I've begun. Ronnie, dear, would you get me some shorthand books and some pencils? Uh, how much do you think you'll be giving me tonight? Well, we may be working most of the night. Oh, that's just ducky. I'm used to working at night. Goodbye, darling. Don't work too hard. I won't. Come on. Oh, thank you, Ronnie. Bye. <laughs> well, I see you fixed everything up. You certainly have. Well, uh, I guess I'll run along. Uh, must you go? I was just poisoning the tea. Oh, Ronnie, you're such a clever. You know, uh, you're going to really like it here, honey child. Watch your hands. I don't tolerate familiarity from anybody, and I mean anybody. I once ruined a man's career. And don't you forget it. Uh, Miss O'Malley, you may have the day off. Why don't you make it a year? But I haven't even begun yet. Oh, that's all right. You get paid just the same. Oh, well, all right. Uh, what time tomorrow? Oh, any old time. Suit yourself. But, but I don't understand. Well, how about noon? All right. Thank you. Well, you were saying something about poison tea? I mixed it. I get thirsties. Now, where was I? Sound of footsteps. Three people. Thank you. Sound of footsteps. Three people. Door bangs. Door cries. Door slams. Two shots. Three screams. Sirens. How does that sound? <laughs> well. It's bedlam. John, I'm in love with your mother. And tomorrow, I expect to be your father. John's going to be your father, and I'm the first to know. Now I don't have to listen tomorrow. But, Father, 
I'm older than you are. John's older than his father? What happened? That's what I'd like to know. I don't know. But don't you worry, Miss Waterbury. I'm not going to do anything. Hello. Hey, they just turned out the lights. Who's calling? This is Charles Harris speaking. I'm sorry to be calling at such a late hour, but I must talk to her. They just turned out the light. Will you keep quiet? This is her husband. No, she's out for the evening. She's right upstairs. And I don't know when she'll be back. Didn't you hear me? I said they just turned out the light. Darling, may I borrow a light bulb? I don't care what you do. What's the matter? I'm going to a hotel in case you're interested. I'll go to a hotel. After all, this is your apartment. No, it isn't. You pay the rent. Johnny, will you take this up to Mr. Stop, please? Oh, and you can't possibly be jealous of that man upstairs. Why, well, he's utterly harmless. Boy, you really had me fooled. Why do you say that? Charles Harris just called. Have you seen him since we came back? Oh, and it's, it's terribly late, and... And I don't like cross-examination. After all, we're two adult human beings, and, and we should be able to trust one another. Don't smile at the way with pretty words, Steve. Have you been seeing them? Yes. All right, then this is it. But I only saw Charles Harris for one reason. I took him your manuscript. He knows a great many publishers. Please don't. It's too late for that. I felt at the nightclub you were in love with Harry, and I knew he was in love with you. After all, five years is a long time, and I was a fool to think I could break it down. I never loved Charles Harris. Well, you never loved me. You were in love with a schoolgirl notion of a popular novel. I really try to play this straight with you, Steve, but I guess I made a beautiful mistake. Oh, and I was in love with you before I met you. Something in your writing, the, the tone, the feeling, the quality appealed to me so much that I used to imagine you. Books were written just for me. It's true, I, I built it up in a schoolgirl way. And, and I was so caught up in it, I, I guess I would have married you the night you lectured in class. If you'd stepped off that platform and, and asked me, I, I would have married you. Just like that. How can you talk to me like that? I put you way up there, too, Steve. But you tore it down in the cruelest way any woman could. You once called me an egotistical fraud. But what about you, Stephanie Gaylord? What have you been? Go ahead, call him. He's waiting for you. Call him. Good morning, Mrs. Waterbury. Good morning, I see. I have an appointment. Yes, I know. Mr. Harris has a surprise for you. Won't you come right in? Steve. Good morning, Charles. Stephanie Gaylord, this is Mr. McNally, Mr. Hudson, Mr. Burke at the Literary Times. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? So you are Stephanie Gaylord. Sit down, Steve. It's a big morning in your life, Steve. Mr. McNally is head of the publishing house in New York. He flew down this morning. That's why I called you so late last night. We've read your book, Miss Gaylord. How long have you worked on it? About five years. I'm recommending it for the McNally Winslow Award for first novel by an unknown. I didn't know you were going to show my manuscript to anyone. I couldn't do anything else after reading it. But don't you see what this will do to Owen? What has Owen got to do with it? Well, Owen's the big guy in my family, and his novel's just been turned down. If this happens on top of that, it, it would just about destroy him. He has to have a sense of importance. He's lost all faith in himself. You mean your husband would feel a sense of competition with you? You don't understand, Mr. McNally. Owen's in trouble. And if his wife, I, I have to help him climb out of it. Steve, I thought you wanted to write more than anything else in the world. I thought so, too, before I married Owen. What about Owen's manuscript? Did you read it? 
Yes, it, it isn't bad. It's good. But it doesn't have what this has. This has greatness. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Please, please sit down. I want to talk. From competition fishing to family fun, Tractor has a boat for you. At Hawley's Boats and Motors, where you'll find the largest selection of the versatile tracker in the Northwest. Check Hawley's flexible financing, including zero down. Choose from more than 450 new and used boats in stock. Then let the friendly Hawley's experts demonstrate the tracker at our in-water showrooms at Dagmar's Landing in Everett and Swalicum Harbor in Bellingham. Just for the fun of it, Hawley's Boats and Motors. Now our prices are hard to beat, like 59 cents each for tacos, burritos, tostadas. So cross the border to Taco Bell, where the best food meets an even better price. Confessions of a home club competitor. The truth about home club membership? Okay, you don't have to be a member to shop there. Anyone can walk into a home club and get prices that are lower than mine. And if you are a home club member? If you are a member, you save even more. A lot of people don't know this. That's right. And I'd like to keep it that way. At the home club, non-member prices beat the competition. And members save even more. There's a reason why Biodent anti-plaque rinse is so different, and so orange. We make it from a remarkable root called Sanguinaria canadensis, and this very special formula, which we've developed, is patented. In lab tests, Sanguinaria has been proven a powerful plaque fighter, effective against 98% of the bacteria that lead to plaque buildup. 98%? That's a pretty clean sweep. Biodent with Sanguinaria. If you're going to fight plaque, fight to win. Right now, at stores everywhere, everything's coming up rosy. Let Ortho show you how to raise bigger, more beautiful roses. Free booklets are at stores near you. You could even win a trip to the Rose Bowl on New Year's Day. It can all be yours. Look for displays now. You'll see. You're better off with Ortho. Good evening, I'm Charles Johnson. The verdict has been read in the Iran-Contra case of Oliver North. We'll have it for you tonight on the 10 o'clock news. Also, just what legal rights do teenagers have? We'll have a report. And pay attention if you have any unpaid parking tickets from Seattle. I'm Jerry Kemp in Seattle, where city officials are working to come up with ways to collect an estimated $20 million in unpaid traffic and parking tickets. Jay Torsha will have weather, Cal Glom said sports, and Wendy Mann and I will have news tonight at 10. We'll see you then. Senor, senoritas, patitas. You from Wednesday. Que bueno. Three-time Indy winner Rick Mears has an important announcement. Happy birthday, Tenzoil. It's Tinsoil's 100th birthday, but we're giving you the present. 100 new, unique, mid-sized Dodge Dakota Sport 4x4s. To enter the Pennzoil 100 giveaway, mail an entry form found on the back of bottles of quality Pennzoil motor oil. And you could win one of 100 new Dodge Dakota Sport 4x4s. So enter today, and winning could be a piece of cake. Has anyone ever buried a person up there? No. Whoever was. Stephen King's all-time best-selling novel becomes the year's most terrifying motion picture experience. Pet Cemetery, rated R. Now playing at theaters everywhere. Folks who use Charter Control Stress have a few things to say about their cleaning. Wonderful. Great. Marvelous. That's it. You should care Beautiful. for me. Because dental cleanings are easier with Charter Control Stress. Dark and night. Yeah. Paradise. Woo! What I love to see. So use the toothpaste more dentists recommend. Wonderful! Charter Control Crest, the dentist's choice. is hard on Charter and easy on you. All right. Seattle's radio station for continuous classic rock and roll. 102.5.
KZOK. The Cleveland Indians. A talented players, enthusiastic fans, and they're giving baseball just a bit outside. A good laugh. A major league. Rated R. Now playing in theaters everywhere. <laughs> I'm giving your popovers another try. Well, give me time to call the fire department. <laughs> no, 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 Miss O'Malley. That's not the line I gave you. I'm sorry, Mrs. Scott. All right. Let's try it again. Yes, sir. John. Mother, I've changed my mind. I don't like your sweetheart. Mother. Well, I like him. That's all that matters. John. As your son, I refuse to approve the marriage. Mother. You're not marrying him. I am. How does that sound? Same. Amen. Mr. Hastings, I must say you're distracting. You know, you shouldn't be using Mr. Waterbury's apartment or Mr. Waterbury's secretary. Well, Mrs. Waterbury isn't here, and I've got to get the program out. Why don't you work in your apartment? She won't work upstairs. Well, why don't you work without her? I can't. I'm a dictator. Dear, why won't you work upstairs? I don't work in men's bedrooms. It's not a bedroom. It's a bachelor apartment. My husband is a hotel manager. One room is a bedroom. Two or more is an apartment. Sylvan, she's got you there. Oh, come on, let's work. Hello, Mr. Waterbury. Yes, what can I do for you? Remember me? I'm Devaney of the Brand Detective Agency. Oh, oh. What's this? A bill for $845.62. Oh, what? For shadowing and delving into the past of one Stephanie Gaylord. But I married her. Uh, we shadowed married women before. Hi, Norm. Get rid of this guy. You want me to call the police? I am the police. What's this doing here? That's my laundry. Do you expect my wife to do your laundry? Say, hey, that's a little large for you, isn't it? That's Mrs. Waterbury's laundry. That's mine. Well, take it and get out of here. And as for you, Mademoiselle O'Malley, you're fired for taking dictation from somebody else. Well, that suits me just fine. I wouldn't work for you even if I did like your horrible writing. Where's Stephanie? I don't know where she is. I know where she is. Where? She paid this bill and I'll let you know. Oh, Ronnie, you happen to have $845.62. Why don't you write him a check? Oh, yes. Call that number right away. Here's the detailed report. It's very amusing. You see, I had to shadow you at the same time that I shadowed her. Here's Stephanie. Oh. Yes. Stephanie, where are you? What? What are you doing there? Stephanie, so ever any chance about getting together? This kills it now. Finally and for all time, we're through. Charles, Charles. Just like that. No sense of shame. Well, maybe she got her old job back and was working for him. At his home? What decent, self-respecting girl works for a man at his home? Maybe she's his secretary. Please, don't tell me about secretary. He could tell you. Here's the report. Page three of the Thanks. Call the employment agency. I'm going to show her. Look, I want a girl this time who's capable and efficient. I'm calling for Mr. Owen Waterbury. Fast typing. I don't care what she looks like. We don't care what she looks like, as long as she's attractive. Do you take shorthand? Oh, but of course. A hundred twenty words a minute. Mm -hmm. And, uh, what did you say your name was? Miss Pigeon. <laughs> uh, her name is Miss Pigeon. Everybody says I'm flighty. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you work before? I'm just out of secretarial school. I think it would be wonderful working for you, Mr. Waterbury. You see, I hope to be a writer myself someday. Oh. Uh, have you ever been married? Oh, no. Never. 
And uh, you have no objections to working on weekends? Oh, not at all. My time's completely my own. And you think Mr. Waterbury's just wonderful? Mm -hmm. uh, this is a play pigeon. I've come for my things. Follow me, Bill. Yeah, I know just where to go. I want you to take everything out of that drawer and put it in that bag. Right. Uh -huh. I knew you'd come back. But it's only for a moment. Uh, where's the mink coat? I didn't get a mink coat. Come into the bedroom, Bill. What's the matter? You ought to me. Hey, haven't you been here before? Sure, I came with the other one. I got a cab stand downstairs now. If you need a cab, just open the window and holler. Well, I'm going to do a lot of hollering now. Uh, that's his former secretary. Get my bag and things out of the closet. Oh, so you're not in love with Harris, but you go to his apartment. You wouldn't let me explain, and what? now I'm not going explain? to. Explain? What kind of an explanation could you make anyway? It doesn't matter anymore. You're right, it doesn't matter anymore. Is this getting awfully personal? What a wonderful typist. Charles Harris is a pot. Just like that. Just like that. Anything else, miss? Yes, my picture. If I were a man, I... If you were a man, I'd ask you to step outside. Go ahead. Hit me. I dare you. Did he slap her? I should say not. She slapped him. I've known all along how you've resented me. It was because I liked your novel and I told you so. You think you've wasted your time. That's your tragedy. My only tragedy is you. I'm going far, far away from here, and I'm going to write a book about you. I'm going to call it The Heel and His Victim. That's a very horrible title. It'll do. Goodbye, Owen Waterbury. And don't you ever try and get in touch with me, because I want no more of you. And that goes for me, too. Where's Miss Pigeon? She, uh, flew the coop. Where do you think Steve's going? I think she's going to marry Harris. Harris, I'd like to see that little worm. I'm going to. Now, where are you going? I'm so mad I could get married. You know, I think I'll have to. Well, whom are you going to marry? It'll be a female. That's about all I can say.
Yes? I've got to sell you with these papers. What for? Keep the divorce from Mrs. Waterbury. Did you see Ronnie around? Well, I haven't seen Mr. Ronnie in about three days. But I heard Kelly got married. Married? Isn't that funny? He didn't even invite me to the wedding ceremony. Me neither. Uh, Ronnie gets married. I'm getting a divorce. Did you know that, Mary? This is Waterbury's divorce. I sure was sorry to hear that, Mr. Waterbury. She was an awful nice person. So did you. At times. Thank you, Mary. Well, I see Scott hiring a new male secretary. Well, Mr. Scott doesn't live in this building anymore. He moved out yesterday. Oh. Well, who moved in up there? Mrs. Waterbury. <laughs> I said, get out. But I don't understand. I... Don't you listen to this him? This is my wife. You're his wife? I'm trying very desperately not to be. Didn't you get the divorce papers today? You're still my wife until the final decree, and that takes a whole year. Are you still here? I said, but get out. Mr. Oh, Simpson, you come back here tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. You'll come yes, back sir. here never. If I find you here again, I'll throw you out on your ear. Yes, Hiring male secretaries right under my nose. Right over your nose, dear. And don't be cute at a time like this. Why'd you take this apartment anyway? Because it was the only one I could find, and Mrs. Reese was kind enough to let me have it. Oh, sure, sure. I thought you'd think I was chasing you, Owen Waterbury. But my living here needs cost us no embarrassment. We can be friends, meet in the hallway, and exchange polite little hellos. I exchanged polite little hellos with your friend Harris recently. Elsie was there. You told me all about your book. Oh, well, you didn't want to have it published because of what it might do to me. <laughs> really? I mean, do you think I look upon you as a competitor? Don't you think I can compete with you, Mr. Waterbury? I read your book last night. It kept me up most of the night. You want to know something? Yes. You're better than I am. But don't tell anybody because I'll deny it. Now, you listen to me, Mr. Owen Waterbury. I'm a human being, too, and, and I have certain rights and privileges. I had an idea for a book, and, and you made me lose a very good secretary. Well, look, why don't you dictate it to me? You? Sure, I can take shorthand. Oh, and what a very... Look, you want to know a secret? What? I'm a better secretary than you are. Oh. All right, prove it. Get the shorthand book and pencil. Okay. And I don't want to hear another word about our personal problems until I get this down. Let's call this. Notes on my new novel by Stephanie Beale. This will be the story of a girl who became secretary to a, a very egotistical man who thought he knew everything there was to know about life. Oh, now, wait a minute, Steve. Please, please, you're interrupting my train of thought. He was attractive in an ugly sort of way. Thanks a million. Will you please stop interrupting me? But, but he was, he was filled with, with childish frustrations and, and complexes which she and her 
silly ways I kill. Now, wait a minute, Steve. I'm not going to sit here and take down this. Listen, this is my new book. Until, until she suddenly discovered she didn't need a wife. She needed a, a psychiatrist. A psychiatrist? That does it. Now I'm insane, am I? Okay, but if you publish that book, I'll sue you. You just go ahead and sue me. The on my face. Hello. You know, this book sounds very interesting, but there's one thing I've got to know. Did she love him? Well, of course she loved him. She loved him deeply, devotedly, desperately. Then why didn't you just say so? I've, uh, I've come for the rent. Romy, you're the new landlord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, that vase belongs up there. And this belongs here. And this belongs here. Oh, what? No. <laughs>